Hello, I'm Bill McCartney welcoming you to the final race in the Hobart Challenge, the second leg of the national circuit for 18 foot skiffs and the series will be decided today. And to win it, Xerox has to beat Prudential and here we are at the start line of gun about to go. There she goes and Prudential crosses the line, Xerox nowhere to be seen, they've missed the start, Bank of New Zealand's there. With us again, Warwick Rookland, our specialist commentator, and Warwick, early on, not looking good for Xerox. No, certainly, I think Phil Barnett's watch might have broken down because he is nowhere to be seen. But actually, who has the lead here is Ella Bachet, who crosses in front of Prudential, and Rob Brown is in second position. Bank New Zealand is in third, but Prudential is electing to go to the left-hand side of the course, where Bank of New Zealand and Ella Bachet is going to the right. So a little bit of a difference in the view of which is the right way to go up this leg. Well, of course, it's proven to be a lottery throughout this series with this breeze gusting up and down and churning around the place as it jumps over the mountain. And we can see now that Alabash A has cleared out to a good lead of about 15 seconds. The late starters coming in from the left, they include Xerox, Skill Engineering, Prima Drinks, Tip Top White High Five, all late for the start. Here's Xerox struggling, and if Xerox is going to win this event, they've got to get up there and they've got to get up there pronto. There in the background, Tip Top White High Five, very late for the start, but of course, no Andrew Cuddy on board. Our onboard camera today is with Prima Drinks. And Prima just going through the tack there. David Lamond pushing his boat. He's hanging in there with Xerox at the moment. Now he just needs to keep it all together. He's uh, made a few mistakes and it's cost him dearly. He needs to get away and get training and uh, get this boat up to speed. Because the boat certainly has the speed, but the crew work seems to be letting them down a bit. And it's just really a matter of experience and uh, working out the combinations. Going through a change in direction there. They went for a very quick uh, tack out to the right, but uh, that hasn't worked out well. They've fallen into a hole in the breeze on board uh, Prima Drinks at the moment, and we can see in the background, Skilled Engineering was crossing them, so they're now back there in about seventh position. But uh, at the head of the fleet, we've seen what a great start uh, Prudential and Bank of New Zealand had. Over on the left, way out on the left, Ella Bache has fallen into the deepest hole I think I've seen in the breeze all throughout this series. Well, this has been happening every race, Bill, and certainly when they get up to the top mark, this is a pattern that has developed over the last three or four days as far as training and racing goes. So it's, um, it's a real lottery at this end, and uh, it's very hard to pick it. And Prudential now hitting that breeze. You saw them go from nothing, just accelerate, and that's the fantastic thing about these 18-foot skiffs. They are the fastest mono hulls in the world. They hit speeds of 30 knots when they've got no breeze. They sit in the water dead. Then you see them hit breeze. They accelerate up to anything up to 30 knots and now again you see them as they get up towards the top mark for the first time hitting another hole in the breeze and although Prudential's leading, Bank of New Zealand right on their tail, rest of the fleet in with a chance now as they get up towards the top mark for the first time, Prudential leading. And when the breeze dies out with these boats they just sink in the water, much like a water ski or a surfboard, they need speed to get up and out of the water. But the course today is the dog leg that we've seen in the last few days. They go from the start-finish line to the top mark, down to the wing mark, through to the bottom mark and back to the gate at the start-finish line. They do that twice. And Bank of New Zealand in the doldrums, would you believe it, but in second position at this stage. And on the downwind leg for the first time, we have Prudential with a slight lead over the Bank of New Zealand. The breeze has come, but that has allowed Xerox to catch up and Ella Bache, but Prudential has got the breeze now and trucking down towards the wing mark for the first time. Xerox and uh, Ella Bache getting fully powered up and there on the right, Xerox being dragged off as they kick into a gust of about 25 knots and start powering down towards the leaders. And in fact, they are lucky. And this is a real luck, game of luck down here in Hobart because they're now sailing down lower than Prudential and Bank of New Zealand and Xerox sailing right up into contention. We've got to remember that Xerox needs to beat Rob Brown in Prudential have any chance of taking out this leg of the Grand Prix circuit. Xerox has got the hammer down three strings, in other words, three people out the end of that wing, and they've got the boat going flat out, trying to get back to the Bank of New Zealand and Prudential, which is exactly what they're doing right now. But look at Ella Bache, out to the left of the picture, Ella Bache in superior breeze, and this is where it's so crazy down here. Prudential rounded that top mark well ahead with Bank of New Zealand. Now look at Ella Bache out to the left, got such a better angle down to the uh, Bottom mark, and I would say Ella Bache must be very close to leading this now, although that big black mark on the border out to the right indicating that Prudential Bank of New Zealand, now you see it, Bank of New Zealand getting dragged away by that big gust and absolutely flying down towards the bottom end of the course. And also we have uh, Skilled Engineering and uh, Prima Drink starting to get into a bit of pressure. They're still trying to make it up towards the uh, gate for the first time. 
And there's a view from Prima looking at skilled engineering. A great battle developing here. Prima is trying to get through to skilled engineering and skilled will try and force them out all the time. And this is great 18 foot skiff racing. This is head on head. Prima against skilled. And there you can see the boys running in there. I say they'll be going for a jibe, a change of direction. Sorry, no, they're going for a drop. They can't make the gate. They can't make it. They've got to, they've got to drop the spinnakers. Oh, dear me, a miscalculation, although that's not probably fair. The breeze, of course, suddenly switches in direction by 15 degrees and they're all over the shop, but uh, up ahead of them. Look at that, Elabashe has assumed the lead from Prudential, certainly. And uh, I think we'll find that Bank of New Zealand and Xerox are right with them, out to their left, very, very close. So suddenly they get a gust and Elabashe is right in business here. Out to the right, Bank of New Zealand now looking famous in good breeze, heading down towards the bottom end of the course. Ella Bache has come storming back into this, Adrian Carlin doing very nicely, and Phil Barnett, the skipper of Xerox, further out to the left, also uh, right with them and nothing in it at all. Suddenly the race closes up. In fact, I think Bank of New Zealand has taken the lead. They've gone from third and fourth, Ella Bache and Bank of New Zealand to first and second. So while this is a complete nightmare, for the people on these boats, it is fantastic viewing for us sitting back here and having a cup of coffee and watching this unfold. Well, there's Xerox in the top of the picture and uh, they uh, may look slightly ahead of those two. In actual fact, they're not because they've got to come back our way before they get down to that bottom mark. And I still reckon Elabashe's ahead. I think that whilst you're an expert and a sailor, Warwick, I don't think you really got this right, mate. I think it's Elabashe leading as they get down towards the bottom end. I know you've been an armchair admiral for a long time, Bill, but I think I'll have a cart and a cascade on you with that for that one. And Prudential having to jibe away because Xerox has right of way and Xerox has got ahead of Prudential and that's exactly what Phil Barnett wanted. We've got Prima and Skilled locked in battle for fifth and sixth position and they're trying to hang on to the leading bunch as they get down to the bottom end of the course for the first time. Not far off it, Andrew Devola driving the Skilled, full steam ahead and at the bottom mark, uh oh. It looks like I've done my dough here. Bank of New Zealand rounds first, and indeed it's Elabashe, but not much in it. Elabashe in second position, coming in third, jibing now, changing direction Xerox. They've got to get the spinnaker bagged early, and this is where Prudential has a chance to get up to them because that spinnaker drop is crucial, and it's where the crew work comes in, and Xerox does a great job. So at the bottom mark for the first time, uh, there's the leading bunch in blue, the first four coming back up towards the start-finish line. Prima drinks and skilled engineering in pink on their way down. And there they are, leading Bank of New Zealand. In second position is Elabashe, Xerox is third, and closest to us in fourth position is Prudential. And this is the first time in Hobart that there hasn't been a lot of carnage on the first lap. And the racing is very close indeed. Prima and Skilled are still battling it out, heading down to the bottom mark for the first time to try and hang on to the leading bunch. There's a lovely boat speed there, well under control, and Andrew Devola is handling his boat very well indeed. In fact, he's starting to pull the gap back to Prima, and I think uh, they'll have to jibe in a moment. Prima's starting to go for the jibe now. Skill goes for the jibe simultaneously, and a sloppy jibe from both of them. And their boats are getting very close. Could be a little bit of a touching going on there. I don't know whether the judges saw that or whether they touched. It's a bit hard to tell from where I'm sitting. Nothing between them, but uh, up ahead, Bank of New Zealand is the first to change directions. They're now heading from the bottom mark back up towards the start finish line and the gate and there you see uh, the uh, skiffs coming fifth and sixth prima drinks and skilled engineering and prima drinks seems to have done better than skilled through that jibe they're moving away from it in the background uh, the bank of oh and in the foreground prima drinks in the drink prima drinks in the drink and on board that's how it looks oh they went in backwards just got hit with a complete uh, drop in the breeze. It just left them completely, and uh, the crew of the weight of the crew just dragged them in over backwards. And now they're in the drink. Prima drinks back in the drink. Bank of New Zealand uh, heading back out to the left-hand side of the course. Up ahead of them uh, is Xerox, over, way out to the left. Coming in closer is Elabashe. Tip top wide high five coming back down again, and Stuart Hamilton on board uh, doing his best. And by crikey, taking on these machines from Novice Brigade is really tough and uh, tip top wide high five doing well to have uh, young Stuart Hamilton doing his best. He's on his way back down the course. Ella Bache coming out to the right hand side of the course. She has separated tax completely with the other three. So Prudential, Bank of New Zealand and Xerox have decided to head way out to the left hand side of the course. Ella Bache heading out to the right. So it's now a question of who gets the breeze as to what's gonna happen in this race and look how far they've separated. You can see the dots out on the top right hand corner of the uh, picture. That's the uh, other three. 
and uh, Craig Ramsden directing the Elabashe way out this side. And if they get the wrong breeze, then they're going to be right out the back door. If they get a nice shift, they'll be in good shape. Bank of New Zealand coming up with the breeze coming over the left-hand side. Down below us is Elabashe. Can't see them. Bank of New Zealand choosing to get back out to the left-hand side. And I know the crews have favoured that left-hand side of the course as they get up towards the halfway mark in this race. Bank of New Zealand tax, tax back to uh, hug that uh, shore over on the left-hand side. And Xerox leads. Xerox doing a bit better and crossing ahead of Bank of New Zealand. So it looks to me like Xerox leads. Well, I think you're mistaken, Bill, because Ella Basha has picked up a new wind shift and has gone from fourth to first. Yes, I think it is absolutely correct. The breeze has switched in a major way right round into the... Uh, Northwest for Ella Bache and she's gone fourth to first, crossing Xerox now. Xerox up into second position. She is second skiff to pick up that change. So Phil Barnett right in business here. His big problem is uh, Rob Brown on board Prudential and this is really bad news for Rob Brown because he's caught over there on the other side of the course over near the hills and there just isn't any breeze over there at the moment. That uh, means that he is now suddenly back in fourth position. Bank of New Zealand is third. Yes, and looking at the points table and skilled engineering in a big hole there, they've parked it. But uh, looking at the point situation, I think Xerox needs to get two boats in between them and Prudential. So they've got to get in front of Ella Bache and let Prudential battle it out with the Bank of New Zealand to take leg two of the Grand Prix Challenge. Bank of New Zealand, Scott Ramsden now has the machine well ahead of Prudential. Prudential is fourth. So Bank of New Zealand doing the job for Xerox. Xerox now starting to close on Ella Bache as they uh, start to get their way up towards the top end of the course, rounding the top mark now. Xerox has right of way here. Xerox has right away in a collision situation and Xerox tax at the lowest moment, but I would say that there would be words exchanged between those two skiffs at the top mark for the final time because Xerox had right of way. Did they not, Warwick? Well, I believe they did, but I'm not a judge, Bill, but uh, certainly Ella Bache has got away with that. Um, Xerox tacked inside them and Ella Bache was able to sail around and get clear air and have hoisted their spinnaker before Xerox. We can see that sail going up there now and a fantastic set from Ella Bache. And they've put the hammer down and they're going to accelerate up to about 25, 30 knots. Xerox has got their spinnaker set and this battle could determine who is going to win down here in Hobart. So from first to second, here's third and fourth coming up. Uh, they've already got the spinnakers set on Xerox, Xerox and Ella Bache and still coming up zigzagging up into the breeze is Bank of New Zealand and more significantly Prudential is behind them in fourth position there they are at the bottom end of the picture they're still going up on the wind a good 30 or 40 seconds behind the leaders now and uh, with Xerox now looking like championship material uh, Phil Barnett driving the Xerox up over the top of Elabache more crew weight on board Xerox starting to tell and uh, Prudential will be looking at this Rob Brown on Prudential will be looking at all this and going he doesn't like it, he won't like what he sees, but he wants Ella Bache to win this and he wants to get in front of Bank of New Zealand to win down here, but that's not what's happening. I think Xerox is starting to sail over the top of Ella Bache. They've got a little bit more crew weight and there's, here's a back marker. Playing havoc, Xerox has had to let their spinnaker go. We can see it flapping around there, flagging, but it hasn't slowed them down too much. But every time they do that, they lose a few vital boat lengths and that will enable Ella Bache to slip around. But certainly at the moment, Xerox has got the right position and got the speed to overtake Ella Bache. Xerox now demonstrating superior boat speed, starting to slip away from Ella Bache. They have much more crew weight, more leverage. They go faster. Prudential, round the top mark, fourth, sets the spinnaker. Beautiful clean set, but they got caught out on the wrong side of the course earlier. Lady Luck didn't deal them a good hand, and now they're back and forth, and they've got it all to do to catch up to Bank of New Zealand, Ella Bache and Xerox. In this race, if they're going to win the uh, Hobart Challenge Show, it's all turning around right now. Yes, it's turning around right now, but what's going to happen in another 10 minutes' time? Because this breeze down here on the Derwent River plays evil tricks on these sailors. And certainly, you can be in the lead one moment and back to fifth or fourth or other way around. And we've seen Ella Bache go from way behind to lead to now Xerox overtaking Ella Bache and establishing a clear lead. And rocket shipping down the track. Look at them go. All three crewmen, the two Daves, Gibson and Ewing, fully extended on the wings. Phil Barnett tucked in with them right down the rear end of the vessel. Now going for the spinnaker drop at the bottom end of the course. And as we've seen, now is the precious moment because it's when these spinnakers get dropped that they're in real danger as the skiffs slow down and a big gust will cause them to trip over. 
themselves and collapse in the water. So very, very crucial moments just at the moment. They've been driven off the course by the breeze, so they're having to drop the spinnakers to two sail reach up to the bottom bark. Meanwhile, Bank of New Zealand coming down under heaps of pressure. Prudential right behind them, catching up to the leaders, and it's still wide open. Crew weight and crew skill counting for everything down here in Hobart, and these three have been doing a fabulous job. Dave Gibson, Dave Ewing and Phil Arnett, and they are in good shape. And they're still leading this race and uh, going great guns. And at this stage, if they win this race, they're going to win the Hobart Series if Prudential stays behind the Bank of New Zealand and if Elabash A can maintain second position. Xerox rounding the bottom mark for the last time. They've got one leg of the course to go. Yes, and they, you can see how tough it is because they've had to run very wide around. Elabash A still has to drive, in other words, turn around. And that's hard to do. You can see they're being dragged off the course now. They're going in the wrong direction at about 20 knots and uh, they're having to come up into the wind and do what we call a granny in the business and that's a very slow way of doing it but it is safe and that's what they've got to do now if they want to keep second place all they've got to do is take it easy stay intact and take it to the finishing line and they will have second place and that'll be a very good placing for them they've been at the front end of the field all the time knocking on the door and if xerox has makes one little mistake ella bashay could take this out so this this regatta is still wide open because there's three people that can win here there's Prudential, there's Xerox, and there's Bank of New Zealand. And Elabache is going to be a major player in this part. Bank of New Zealand on the way down, Elabache on the way up. So Bank of New Zealand hanging on to third. We saw Prudential in the background still fourth. And Elabache, despite overrunning the mark, has maintained second position. Adrian Carlin having a great race, and Scott Ramsden choosing a granny. Scott Ramsden also uh, choosing to do a tack instead of a jibe because the uh, breeze is blowing so hard, and a great surprise to me to see him doing that. That's him in blue at the bottom end of the course. He's currently third in pink, Elabache is second. White Xerox leading and Prudential still coming up to the bottom mark and they might as well be last unless they can get up on these skiffs and get up into third position because if they can't then Xerox is going to win the uh, Hobart Challenge and that'll make it two out of two. Yeah, we should explain a little bit about this sort of grannying and jibing and tacking. It's all a bit of a foreign language to a lot of people but tacking means that they turn the boat around into the breeze and jibing means that they've got to turn the boat around with the breeze behind them and when you've got to turn the boat around with the breeze behind you it is a very dangerous maneuver particularly in these sort of boats where there's a lot of sail and down here in the derm when the breeze is changing so often so i hope that puts a bit of light on the subject bill certainly did for me warwick uh, bank of new zealand though holding out uh, prudential at this stage prudential still fourth xerox still leading looking cool phil barnett the skipper of the xerox calling for attack getting through the change of directions now, coming up now with the wind coming over their right-hand side and getting up towards the finish. And by crikey, they're looking very much like winners at this stage. And Phil Barnett looks back and he likes what he sees because unfortunately for Rob Brown, he's not able to catch up to Bank of New Zealand. Scott Ramsden's been able to hold his lead and Prudential looks like they're gonna have to be satisfied with second. Tip top white high five, uh, making their way down towards the bottom end of the course and Stuart Hamilton from Hobart doing a terrific job, all things considered. And they're going great guns at this stage, currently in seventh position. Up ahead, Xerox now, and there they go, through the line. The Xerox team has won the fourth heat of the Hobart Challenge, and they'll be sitting around now and watching to see where Prudential finishes, because if they stay in fourth, they're going to come second. Two Xerox, currently in second position in this race. Ella Bache, Adrian Carlin, another fantastic effort, and they cross the line in second position, patting each other on the back, and well they might. Uh, Craig Ramsden giving Adrian a pat on the back. She did fantastically well. And indeed, Bank of New Zealand uh, has held on to third. She will cross third. Z Prudential's been unable to make up the ground. They've done their utmost. They got caught in the hole in the breeze about halfway through the race, and Warwick, that was it. Yeah, well, it was tricky conditions, but uh, good job by Xerox. Uh, with Prudential in second place, Ella Bache in third place, great result from them. And the Bank of New Zealand, Scott Ramsden in there in fourth. So on the national circuit, after two events, Xerox leads, Prudential second, Bank of New Zealand narrowly third. And here's the winning skipper, Phil Barnett. This is short course racing and anything can happen. So if, if we have a, or a failure, a gear failure or something in the future regattas in, um, in Melbourne or in Sydney or in Perth, that um, we, we can um, drop our placings. We started this regatta with um, a 14 point lead in the uh, national circuit and we've still got a 14 point lead in the national circuit, but a lot's gone on in the meantime. Obviously with that, uh, with that mask problem, that you, you were down on pace, but sooner or later you are going to really need some pace. Where are you going to get that from? I mean, uh, you, can't, you can't get away with being a good sailor forever. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's that's right. We, we've still got to uh, do a lot of work on our mast and and, and match the, the sails to them. This is the whole problem we've been having. You know, we lost probably three or four weeks, um, you know, leading up to the Townsville regatta and all the little mishaps, but you can't keep using that as an excuse. We've got to start pushing the right buttons very quickly or this uh, national circuit is going to slip away from us.